Hello? You guys in there? Oh, hey, y'all, welcome back. Hey, can I ask y'all a quick favor? If you enjoy my content, can y'all please like, comment, and share the video with your friends? With that being said, thank you for watching my channel, thank you for being on this journey with me, and let's sort of propel this channel to the next level. With that being said, thank you very much. Let's get on with the show. In today's Explore, we're in Gary, Indiana, venturing inside the ruins left behind by the city's hardship. From Magic City to Murder Capital, you don't want to be out here during nightfall. Over the next few episodes, we'll be going deep inside Gary, Indiana's decaying city and explore some of the worst places you have ever seen. First, we explore Lou Wallace High School, established in 1926 and closed in 2014. Then, we venture inside an abandoned animal hospital frozen in time, a decaying chop shop with interesting custom cars left behind, a historic city church, and we even get to explore Michael Jackson's old high school. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. This city is so abandoned that it would take years to explore the entire town. In the next few episodes, I'll be teaming up with Decaying Midwest. And we would like you to join us so we can all explore what's left of Gary, Indiana. Well, here it is. Lou Wallace High School and all of its glory. Or whatever is left of it. It looks like we made it just in time before demolition. Speaking of which, that is all you see in Gary, demolished or abandoned buildings. But how did such a flourishing town full of hustle and bustle become a ghost town which seemed like overnight? Gary, Indiana was once a mecca for America's steel industry in the 1960s. But half a century later, it has become a desolate ghost town. If you look around, there are abandoned buildings everywhere. It's known to be one of the most miserable cities in the United States. And sadly, the people who live there would agree. Once a thriving, prosperous town is now a shadow of its former self. But why? Well, during the 1860s, the high steel demand took off by the rise in automobile manufacturing and highways, and it introduced many jobs. To keep up with the growing demand, factories were built across the country, many of them near the Great Lakes, so the mills could access raw materials of iron ore deposits. Idyllic areas were transformed into manufacturing pockets, and Gary, Indiana was one of them. The town of Gary was founded in 1906 by manufacturing behemoth U.S. Steel. Company chairman Albert H. Gary, whom the city was named after. Gary sits on the south shore of Lake Michigan, about 30 miles from Chicago. The new Gary Works plant began operations just two years after the city broke ground, and new places like this school started opening up. My God, that sucks, dude. All right, come on. It wasn't like this last time. These are all TVs. And yeah, stuff. I'll see that.
This is disgusting. found the Christmas decoration quota. Fresh out. Looks like math and biology books here. Whole assortment. That thing's moving on its own, probably haunt it. The more jobs that opened up, the more workers came from out of town to flourish. But this wouldn't last long. A growing number of steel workers complained about unsafe working environments, being underpaid and were forced to work 12-hour shifts seven days a week. One thing unfortunately led to another, and in 1919, the Great Steel Strike took place in which workers across the country, including Gary Works, joined massive picket lines outside and demanded fair treatment. Because you know what they say, strength comes in numbers, as 365,000 workers started protesting and forcing people to pay attention. Unfortunately, nothing happened at this time due to racial tension, fears of Russian socialism, and weak workers' union that allowed the companies to break the strikes and resume production. With increasingly high demand, Gary continued to prosper. By the 1920s, Gary Works Steel Factory employed 16,000 workers and operated 12 blast furnaces, making it the country's largest steel plant. The town was on its rise as new schools, civic buildings, churches, and commercial businesses popped up all over, which continued until the late 1960s.
Yeah, so I think this is one of the drinking fountains here. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I think that's what it was. Because if you look down here, it looked like they had probably hoses going to that at one point. That's pretty awesome, though. You don't see that every day. A mural for a, a drinking fountain. What was this? Oh. Almost. Oh. Oh, I see. It's just the desks are turned upside down. Wow. This pool is massive. This is probably the biggest high school pool I've ever seen, probably. Oh, what is that mini pool over there, too? So it's got this one. Plus it's got one way over there. Yeah. And what it looks like standing right at the very end looking all the way down I'm gonna zoom in a little bit this is the biggest pool I've ever seen in a high school straight up no lie this thing is massive no windows but still cool oh yeah oh, That's the deep end? How deep is it? Look how deep that is. Can you turn your light real quick? Yeah. Like, if you fall in there, you're not getting out. Dude, what are you doing? Fall in there, you're definitely not going to get out. Like, there's no way. And that's a wide shot. One more shot of this place before we proceed into the other parts of the school. Inside this seedy, abandoned crack den. Even though the city was dubbed the city of the century and also named the Magic City, everything good about this place turned sour overnight. As fast as it grew, the collapse was even quicker. During the 1970s, the collapse of American steel would take a turn for the worst because the growing number of foreign steel manufacturers started growing, especially in automation. In 1971, tens of thousands of factory employees were let go and businesses started to feel the effects of this, and Lou Wallace High School being no exception. It was only a matter of time before Gary felt its demise. All right, so this was the shop class, you said? Actually, this one might have been technology. This specific room, I think the shop's next door. Yeah, this is like technology books and stuff. And graphics and whatnot. Yeah, this is the like computer lab, I think. All right. Not much left in this room, but still cool. Let's see. So it's like a little mini gym here. Yeah, and I'll take you to the other one.
when I was in high school and you want to know what I did when the teacher brought these things out? I fell asleep just like the rest of the class. Classic. <laughs> I love gym equipment. And we found the mother load of gym equipment. And uh, that's Matt. Say hello, Matt. What's up? Follow him on TikTok. Under Matt, what's your last name? What is it? I prefer my YouTube, but... Oh, our, our, our YouTube. You're always, you're always pushing my, my TikTok. Nobody likes my content on TikTok. <laughs> well, you're most famous on TikTok. You got like 100,000 what subs or something like that? 100,000 subs, but they all liked me for different content. So now that I'm doing Urbex, they don't really care. Oh, you hear that, people? We forgive them. Hey, Matt, do you even lift? No. Oh. Everybody gets one. No. Stretch is probably work. You, you'd rather go eat McDonald's and Burger King? No. And drink Red Bulls all day? That's heavy. Yeah? It still works. It still works. It still works. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. I'm going to go take a peek and see which stairwell is better. Okay. I'm going to try to get through all this crap, but I'll get all yeah. tore up. Yolo. Yeah, they're demolishing it. Caught it right in the nick of time. Approaching the 70s, steel workers fell from 32,000 in 1970 to just 7,000 in 2005. The city's population also dropped from 175,000 in 1970 to less than 100,000, as many of the city's residents left town to seek work. Job opportunities went away as businesses closed and crime rose. By the early 1990s, Gary was no longer called the Magic City, but America's murder capital. A recent interview with a local quoted this, We used to be the murder capital of the United States, but there's hardly anybody left to kill. We used to be the drug capital of the United States, but for that, you need money. And there aren't any jobs or things to steal here. Which begs the question, why would anyone want to stay here? I guess they are content and it's all they know because they were raised that way. They don't know what real life is outside of these walls of Gary. Here's another tractor. Huh? Do you hear that drilling? I don't know. I think there's somebody inside. You think? I think so. Fuck. Just what we need. I can't tell where it's going from. Yeah, they might be uh, demolishing this school while we're still in it, so we gotta keep an eye out for that. Man, they cleared out a lot up here, huh? Yeah, this is all cool. Damn. Oh, this is the gym, huh? Yeah, no, this is style. Yeah, I'm gonna turn my light off for this one. Pretty nice gym. Looks like you had a running track up there, too.
Let's leave him alone. said somebody's in here. Yeah, it does sound like it. It kind of sounds like, it smells like uh, diesel fumes in here for some reason. I don't know why what's causing it to smell like diesel, but the fumes in the school are pretty loud. And I don't know what that smell's coming from. As you drive around Gary, Indiana, it's evident that the quality of life here has diminished as the failing economy results in a sea of abandoned buildings. And if that wasn't enough, the tension of racial segregation also played a role. In the beginning, many newcomers to the town were white European immigrants. Some African Americans also migrated from the Deep South to escape Jim Crow laws. Southern Democratic dominated state legislatures invented Jim Crow laws to disenfranchise and remove political and economic gains made by African Americans during the Reconstruction period. The enforcement of Jim Crow laws was in effect until 1965. However, things weren't much better for them in Gary, Indiana. Black workers were often marginalized and isolated due to discrimination. Found a piano. Let's see if it works. Oh, of course not. It's too wet. It's like dry rotted or something. But you can see when I hit the keys, they kind of move, but not really. Yeah. Gotta watch this floor because it is, yeah, like Matt was saying, it's pretty shoddy in here. So, 
Here's the levers. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they do anything. They're probably mechanically operated. They probably need a yeah. power line. Oh, I see the weights right here. Yeah. Oh. Them weights ain't going over and too rusted. Yeah. And we can look all the way up. It's got some pretty good lighting in here. Kinda. Right on top of the ceiling. Zoom in right here. I found a newspaper and the date on it says Thursday, March 24th, 2005. And this is one of the latest newspapers we can find in here. See the neighbors are right there. Report all drugs, guns, and gang activities in the school. So you definitely know it was bad for sure. Being that this school is in Gary, and yes, it's Gary. Anybody welcome to come. I don't care if I give this location out or not. It's in Gary. And uh yeah, it's bad over here. And the reason why I'm talking so low is because, of course, I don't want anybody to hear us. like the other language <laughs> what a waste of books I know a lot of these are still good not in the library though or they Sorry. could be outdated yeah this may be been a music room wait let me see it had something to do with sound yeah those little pads right there on the yeah, wall right there pad. that's for sound ending Yeah, had to be. So we just came across something interesting, and I have no idea. Yeah, I have no idea what this was used for. Third floor, second floor. Oh, this yeah, control oh. panel for the school. Oh. It's for heating and boilers. Yeah. See that mat room pool. It, it took care of the pool too and gymnasium. Yeah. First floor, second floor. It's got a third floor too. The code of ethics, Lou Wallace students. Yeah, I thought this room was a pool. <laughs> it looks like a pool. At first, yeah. Kind of hard to believe, but you see all that stuff covering the windows? So this is like the first floor. There's a second floor. But they throw they threw so much trash out the window that it's actually blocking the first floor window. Look at that. Hey, Matt, is this the first or second floor? It's the first floor. Lou Wallace High School opened in 1926 and closed in 2014 due to low enrollment. 
By World War II, Gary had become a fully segregated city with racist elements. Eventually, the whites moved out and the blacks moved in, causing white flight. This forced workers to abandon their jobs and companies to go along with it. These days, people that remain in Gary live in poverty. I read an article on the internet that said, Gary is coming back. Honestly, if you want my opinion, I don't see this happening anytime soon. The people that live in Gary now shouldn't have to rely on a government to make their neighborhoods better. It starts with the people first, and the people would have to make their communities better before anyone else can. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I hope you stick around for many more. Feel free to sub to the channel, as I would greatly appreciate that. Thanks for watching.